Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how to paint a Poxwalker and a Plague Marine in the style of the second Plague Company, the Inexorable. Or at least how I imagine they would look like. This Plague Company favors mechanized assaults and they are known as the Inexorable due to the crushing nature of their advance. Their warriors are infected with the Ferric Blight. This is a disease that affects their armor and that of their vehicles and that can spread to their enemies. That sounds like a great reason to work on some decayed metal and rust effects and that's exactly what I did with these two. The skin of the Poxwalker is painted in similar tones as the armor of the Plague Marine to tie it all together. This paint scheme can easily be expanded upon and I think that vehicles would look great in this scheme too. I'll start with the Poxwalker and then do the Plague Marine. So, to start, I almost always prime my models with a zenithal highlight. This is done by first priming them black and then spraying with a white primer from the top of the model. This way you already get some lighter surfaces where the sun would normally hit the model. Then, I'm going all over the model with a dry brush of Deathcore Drab. This is a nice desaturated green and brown tone and it's a perfect as a base for his skin. Then I dry brush iron rack skin all over the model, but not as heavily as the deathcore drab. Then I apply typhus corrosion to his arm. Now the model has his primary colors blocked in and you can already see what the end result will look like. Now I'm applying rock art flesh on the hose of the arm, the maggots on his back and the loincloth. I'm also applying this to his teeth to give him that beautiful movie star smile. This little Nurgle icon gets a coat of Warplock Bronze, just to add a bit of shininess to the model. Now it's time to work on the rust for a bit. I just lightly dry brush on some Mornfang Brown. And be subtle with this, because you can easily add too much of this light brown to the arm. Then I go over it with an even lighter dry brush of Ryza Rust. You need to be even more subtle with this to get the colors right. Time to add some shading to this guy. I'm applying Agrax Earthshade to all the parts that I had painted in Rockart Flesh earlier. So that's the hose, the maggots, the loincloth and his teeth. Then I shade all the flesh with Athonian Camo Shade. This ties the layers of dry brushing together and it makes his skin look a bit less dusty. I figured he could use more brown tones so I decided to do his belt and pouches in Mornfang Brown. While that dries, I'm applying a little bit of Nihilac Oxide to the Nurgle icon to give it a bit more of a worn look. After all, these guys are supposed to decay all the metals that they come in contact with. Then I shade the leather with Agrax Earthshade. Now to add some more highlights with Nurgle's Rot. This technical paint is a must-have if you are painting Death Guard. It gives this slimy look to everything it touches. I'm adding it to any bubos on his body the innards that are hanging out and I let it seep out of the burst blisters. It just breaks up the desaturated green of his skin. And that's the little poxwalker done. I think he looks properly sick. Of course these poxwalkers usually don't carry a lot of metal and so it's not that easy to paint them in the theme of this second play company that is supposed to rot away the metals that it gets close to. But check out the plague marine next and see what I think decaying metal could look like. So let's do this plate marine. This guy is primed in the same way as the Poxwalker with a zenithal highlight and then quickly dry brush ashen grey all over the armor. Just to give a good grey base for the metal effect that comes next. Now I'm going all over the armor of this model with AK Interactive's Decay Deposits. This is an enamel wash that is fantastic to get these effects. Now I understand that enamels might sound scary if you're used to painting with acrylics. But there really is only one difference between the two. You use water to dilute acrylics and to wash your brushes after using these paints. And for enamels, you use white spirits. That's it. The decay deposit layer takes some time to dry, so I'm going over the other metal parts with typhus corrosion. The exhausts on his back, the gun, the sword, the grenade, all of this gets a layer of the typhus corrosion. I also apply blotches of it to the armor in the places where it's pocked and cracked open. After letting this dry, 
I'm applying Rockart flesh to the hoses and the little straps of cloth that are around his weapon. I did the same with the Poxwalker, and that's a good way to tie the different models in an army together. Use the same paints for similar details on the models. Then I go over all the tentacles and fleshy bits with iron rack skin. I use the same paint as the second dry brush layer on the Poxwalker, and again, this helps to tie the two models together. Then I apply some Warblock bronze to the metal details. The shoulder pad gets a light touch of this, as well as the Nurgle icon hanging on his back, and a little trim on his weapon. Again, I did the same on a Poxwalker, and this will tie them together. The rust surfaces on the Marine are quite a bit bigger than the arm on the Poxwalker, and that's why I'm dabbing on some Rhinox hide. This will break up the undercoat of Typhus Corrosion a bit, and it gives more different rust tones. Then the process is the same as with the Poxwalker. I lightly dry brush on some Mornfang Brown on all the rust parts. Be gentle with this, just as on the Poxwalker. You're going to overdo it if you're not gentle. Finally, a light dry brush of Riser Rust on all the parts to make these edges pop a bit more. Now I'm shading this Plague Marine in the same way as the Poxwalker. I apply little bits of Agrax Earthshade on the parts that I painted in Rock Art Flesh. And then a shade of Athonian Kama shade on the tentacles and the growth that goes over the hoses. While the shades dry, I'm going to add a bit more detail to the exhaust. An easy way to make it look like they've been belching out black smoke is to add some Abaddon black on the tops where the smoke is supposed to come out. As you can see, I'm just dabbing it on the top of the exhaust pipes. The warp block bronze gets a bit of nihilac oxide, of course. Don't apply too much of this. The color can be very bright and it will really stand out on the model in the end if you use too much of it. And then it's time to add some Nurgle's Rot to this Plague Marine as well. I apply this on the tentacles, the edge of his weapon and the barrel of the gun. And I also do the visor of his helmet with this. And here are the finished Poxwalker and Plague Marine, how I imagined them if they were from the second Plague Company. The rust parts on both models look completely rusted through, and with the blotches of rust on the armor, it's clearly spreading all out over the Marine. The decay deposits from AK Interactive really give an amazing effect, but if you don't want to get this enamel paint, you could achieve something similar by using the dry brushing techniques that I used on the Poxwalker. Just don't shade it with Ethonian Camo shade. Leave it with a dry brush effect, because that will look dusty. So let's take a second to talk about the enamel paint that I used. Like I said, some people might think it's a big step to start using enamels instead of acrylics, but really, the only thing you need to add to your table, painting table is a little glass jar, put some white spirits in there, and then use this like you would use the water you use with your acrylics. Wash out your brushes in white spirits again, and that's it. That's really the only addition you have to make to your painting table. So I'm going to make another video on how to use the decaying deposits by AK Interactive. If I did already, you should see a link to it come up on the screen right now, as if it's magic. If I didn't, then please just hold on, it'll come soon, and it'll be available on YouTube for everyone. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can use this for yourself or follow along with the recipe and make a cool death card army in this style. If you liked it, please click that like button. And if you want more of this, subscribe and check out my website, fogofgore.com. There's many more painting recipes there, often in the form of photo posts, so you can just follow along. And if you want, you can support me through Patreon. I'll put a link in the description. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.